Hello and welcome to another timeless gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Grixis colored self mill deck, sometimes also referred to as a dredgeless dredge deck, that's uh, trying to fill the graveyard to eventually get some creatures back for free, such as a Bloodgast, which is a 2 1 that cannot block, even as haste if the opponent has 10 or less life, and we get it back simply by playing a land. Then there's a Silver Smote Ghoul, a 3-1 that returns if we manage to gain 3 life, which we can do thanks to Creeping Chill. And then finally Prized Amalgam, 3-3 Zombie, that will enter tapped, and we can easily get it back if we return the Bloodgast, Silver Smote Ghoul, or even a Narcomoeba, which we also get to put in play for free if we happen to mill it or uh, surveil it, which is basically equivalent as a 1-1 flyer. And then there's also Wander as a nice one-off here, which will give our team flying as long as we control an island and Wander is in the graveyard. So that can also be very important once the ground stalls out a bit, so we can deal those last points of damage. And then another creature that benefits from being in the graveyard is the Ox of Agonas, which we can escape for just a double red if we exile eight author cards from our graveyard, which is also not too difficult. And then when it enters the battlefield, we discard our hand and draw three. And discarding our hand is also useful if we have a bunch of blood ghasts, prize amalgams, and ghouls stuck in hand, which we would much rather have in the graveyard. And another way of discarding them is with Faithless Looting. Now I know what you're thinking, isn't Orgish Bowmasters everywhere in this format? So drawing cards can be punished quite badly by it, and that is true, but we often can cast looting on turn 1 to already discard some of those cards, and then once we suspect Bowmasters we don't have to flash it back, but it's still a nice way to put those initial creatures in the graveyard, which might otherwise be stuck in hand. And then it also helps us dig towards our more impactful cards, and the most impactful card in the deck by far is Glimpse the Unthinkable, just a blue and a black to mill 10 cards so we can target ourselves, and then put a pretty big chunk of our library into our graveyard, hopefully finding many of these cards from this category. And then we can even cast it for free using Founding the Third Path, where we get to cast a 1 or 2 mana spell from our hand without paying its mana cost. Then on chapter 2 we can mill 4 and eventually get something back from the graveyard, so that can also get a glimpse back for instance. So ideally we start from chapter 1, but sometimes we can also read ahead if we, for instance, don't have a glimpse or another spell in hand that we want to cast for free and immediately want to mill 4 or even get something back from the graveyard if we have the mana for it. And then we can also mill more with Stitcher's Supplier, milling 3 when it enters or dies. And finally, Gaze can surveil 3 at instant speed, so sometimes we can even cast it in our upkeep before taking our draw step if we're digging for a specific card, and can also flash it back for one on the blue. So another great way to fill the graveyard. And then the mana base has the 8 Grixis colored fetch lanes, and of course lots of uh, shock lands to get as well, so if we mill a few of them we hopefully have some left. And then it's also important to have these islands to fetch up so we can enable Wander to give the team flying. And then a mana confluence as another mana fixer that can make all three colors in this deck can also be pretty important since we want to be able to cast all these different one drops on turn one, followed by glimpse. So if we want to curve looting into glimpse, having access to all this mana fixing is pretty important. And then the fetch lands also have good synergy with bloodgast as it's a way to enable landfall twice and potentially even enable landfall during the opponent's turn, which in turn can also maybe get back prize amalgam, can be an interesting way of playing around sweeper effects as well. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully our opening hands will include lots of glimpse, since that's one of our key cards, and then uh, mostly looking to fill the graveyard as quickly as possible and get lucky with the types of cards we get back for free. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand's not great, but also not terrible. Can looting on one, discard double bloodgast, and then hopefully find a second land for founding into glimpse. So Narcomiba is the only useless card in hand. Turn on Mystic, okay. So a likely a natural order deck we're up against. And still no land, so we have to sweat it out next turn. Turn to Archdruid, so that can lead to scary things. Did find a land eventually, so return double Bloodgast. And then Founding starting from Chapter 1. So we can cast Glimpse targeting ourselves. And hopefully find more goodies. Looks like a Creeping Chill is the only useful thing we found. And a Ghoul. Alright, so a Ghoul will come back as well end of turn. 
All right, opponent can already potentially cast a natural order. Don't think it's quite lethal, but uh, next turn it could be. For now, visionary to draw more cards. And a shepherd, so next turn they can activate shepherds, turning all their creatures into base 5-5. Five five with, of course, still the bonus from Visionary and Archdruid, and now even the Imperius Perfect, so... Yeah, next turn we're facing Lethal, so we better get lucky here. Find another Creeping Chill. And then, yeah, we can Glimpse target ourselves. But that's not gonna necessarily be good enough. We have a Ghoul that can block but one blocker may not be enough. I guess if we take two of mana confluence, block one creature, we still take... Yeah, with all the lords, it's more than 20 damage. So... Yeah, I don't think we can uh, survive unless we find a few Narcomibas as additional blockers. We'll give it a shot. Okay. Found Narcomiba, another Creeping Chill, and a Wander. So that can give the team flying if we have an island in play, which we do not. Uh, this is attacking for 7 damage, which our opponent can just block, so there's no point. Get back double ghoul, double amalgam. So we only have two blockers here at the moment, which uh, may not be enough. And then our hope is that we can find an island next turn to fly over. And with Gaze and Upkeep, we can improve our chances. Another Visionary, okay. Elves, and then they can still tap Archdruids. Nope, they're tapping Mystic now. So it doesn't seem like they're gonna kill us here necessarily, unless they natural order for Crater Hoof. But on the board, we should be able to block. So there's still five mana floating. And another Archerid, all right, so we've got a chance. Just need to find an island. Another elf. So founding also lets us replay a spell, but I don't think we're interested in casting another glimpse. So instead we can gaze and then gaze again for one mana. Looting is also an option, but there we go. That's all we need. One fetch land. Assuming we still have a watery grave or a steam vents here. Which I believe we do. Just double checking. Yeah, there should still be at least one left. And there we have it, team flies, the opponent's creatures do not, and that's game, awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and this hand's pretty mediocre, don't have a big mill spell, just looting and gaze, Narcomy by hand, so yeah, let's mulligan, this is better, and then... Easily get rid of a Narcomiba. Turn one Gaze, turn two Founding into Glimpse. Oh wow. Starting with a Leyline of the Void. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much game. So opponent's playing the Geist deck that wants to fragment reality their own Leyline. I guess we don't show them that we're a graveyard deck yet. And hopefully they sacrifice their own Leyline to the fragment reality, the black one. Leaving them with Leyline of Sanctity. Opponent does nothing. Well, I don't want to gaze and put everything in my graveyard, so... I guess I'll just take my draw step. And then, yeah, hopefully our opponent goes for Fragment Reality on Leyline of the Void. They're more likely to want to keep Sanctity against Discard. Okay, that actually worked. So we might still have a chance, although it's not going to be easy. Geist is a pretty fast clock, and our opponent likely has a few auras in hand to enhance it. 
But yeah, if we cast any of our mill spells, our opponent most definitely would have kept a black ley line. I resisted the urge to just concede on turn zero. Let's see if it was worth it. So I can take three down to ten. Opponent sitting us for seven. Yeah, I may as well cast the uh, gaze here. And then Amalgam in Graveyard donates Mana Confluence. Gotta mill some Creeping Chills. Start from Chapter 1, cast a Glimpse. Don't want to play land yet in case we mill Bloodgeist. Fragment Reality or Founding? Sure. That actually helped. Find Narcomoeba. Which will get back Price Amalgam and Double Creeping Chill. Which does not target the opponent, so it gets around Leyline of Sanctity. And then we've got Triple Blood Gas to get back. So don't mind if I do. And then the Price Amalgam as well. Okay, well. We went from uh, thinking we were dead on turn zero to actually having a fighting chance. <laughs> and our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And our hand's pretty unexciting. Without Glimpse, no other big mill effects. This is better, although we're actually missing blue mana for Glimpse. Although with looting there's a realistic chance we find it. And since we have looting, I don't mind keeping a price amalgam. So it's between Supplier or Blood Crypt to get rid of here. Assuming we need a blue mana for this hand to function. I guess we get rid of a Blood Crypt. And once upon a time. So it could be a green Titan ramp deck, as we see Castle Garenbrig, so Titan confirmed pretty much. Nope, stomping ground for Kami, so yeah, I guess it's still likely a Titan ramp deck. As we see Field of the Dead. Okay, so it's kind of a race to hopefully beat a Bojuka Bog before they exile our graveyard with it. So step one, now that we found Polluted Delta, I don't have to loot, but putting Amalgam in Graveyard might be better than randomly milling three. So we'll go for it. And then we can discard a Bloodgast as well. Small chance they have a Boshuga Bog in hand, or they can tutor it up with a Sylvan Scrying and play it. Which would be a little bit painful. Yep, yeah, there it is. At least if they Boshuga Bog now, then... Uh, they won't have access to the effect later in the game. Opponent actually getting a Sunken Citadel. So they want to cast a Titan next turn with Castle. Which will in turn get a Bojuka Bog, I'm sure. Okay, so for now Delta get Watery Grave, cast Glimpse. And we'll at least get a Blood Gas and Amalgam back. But hopefully we'll find some more goodies. Let's see here, Steam Vents could be alright, although we do want double black for Supplier. Double red is mainly for Ox of Agonas, but uh, yeah, let's get Watery Grave. Let's see, Creeping Chill, Narcomoeba, and then Silver Smote Ghoul end of turn as well. So the problem here is once Titan makes a bunch of zombies, it's going to be difficult to get through on the ground. So milling Wander to give the team flying is going to be pretty key. I'll put an upkeep stop on the off chance we want to flash back a gaze, but I doubt it. Just going to go double supplier and then gaze afterwards. And then yeah, finding Wander is probably going to decide the outcome of this game. They could also wait to get Bojuka Bog until after we mill Wander, but nope, opponent goes for it now. 
which makes sense, although I don't think we really mind. There were no creatures for us to get back. So, could also gaze right now. If I find another glimpse, that could be better. Sure. Creeping chill is good, and then I don't think I want to draw any of these, so... Opponent also gain to a fountain, hopefully that's the only one. Back down to 14, take our draw step. Draw the wonder. Okay, so next turn I can discard it with the looting. And then for now we'll just play a double supplier to fill the graveyard some more. Play one before playing land in case we milled a bloodgeist. And then... Doesn't look like we're getting anything else back here. I guess we will get back Ghoul, since we uh, milled a Creeping Chill earlier. So that will in turn get back Price Amalgam. So if this one trades, that's fine. And I guess same goes for everything else. So I'll send a team. So it's our last chance to get in on the ground. And then, yeah, hopefully this Wander can steal a win next turn. We're not in danger of dying next turn to the Titan attack, but it will present some inevitability. But uh, Wonder in hand is probably the safest place for it to be. I highly doubt our opponent's got a second Bozhuka Bog to tutor up. They do have a second Field of the Dead. And now Titan can get all sorts of lanes. Maybe a colony garden to make a blocker. And our opponent gets a third field, so... Zombies are plenty. And, uh... Yeah, I don't think we need to block with Supplier necessarily, since it's two extra damage in the air. And uh, there's a chance, of course, we mill something else good, but, uh... Our opponent seems dead on board if this Wanderer plan works out. Since we'll get double Amalgam back as well. And yeah, that's why we play Wonder. Creeping Chill could also be nice to just hard cast for four mana. Team flies. And flying is pretty effective against Feel of the Dead. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand is pretty effective if uh, we can cast Double Glimpse. That's most of our deck in our graveyard. And then turn one. Looting is useful to discard Wanderer, although we can always do that later. So for now I'm preferring Gaze to start filling the graveyard. Put on blue-white. Looks like control. So they may have an answer to our glimpse. Which is a reason to just cast Gaze instead. Founding is not bad, so that will get countered instead of the Glimpse. And then do we want a land afterwards? Not necessarily. And if I do get to actually resolve my mill spell, I don't want to mill a land. So yeah, drawing the Founding was almost equivalent to drawing another Glimpse when it comes to playing around counter spells. But it lets it resolve. I guess they can always decide to counter the Glimpse instead. But then we'll eventually get it back with the final chapter. And we get to mill four more on chapter two. That resolves. Creeping Chill Narcomiba, and then it looks like Double Bloodgast is in the graveyard as well. And we already have a Ghoul that we get to return. So that's quite a lot of stuff. A rattle chains, I see, so it's blue white spirits. Narcomiba conveniently blocks the rattle chains, but they might have a lord to pump it up at instant speed. So, yeah, this attack implies they have a lord like a Droxkull Captain or the Supreme Phantom at two mana. So I'll just take it. I don't see a point. I mean, I guess by blocking we force them to cast a Lord, so we can 
resolve or glimpse. Whereas they might have a spell queller in hand to counter it. So maybe it's still worthwhile just to make that trade. And there's a Supreme Phantom. The fact that they didn't hesitate makes me think they don't have a spell queller in hand. So now the question is we could gaze to try and hit a land and still glimpse afterwards. Um, might be worth it. Could also looting, try and draw into a land and still glimpse, discarding wonder. And giving the team flying is pretty huge here. Uh, so I'll just take my draw step. Alright, a land is perfect. So, mill four. And then we can start with looting. I guess they could have a spell pierce technically, so we'd rather have them spell pierce the looting. Discard a wonder, and don't think we're casting Narcomoeba. And get back double bloodgast. They don't have haste just yet. But they do a flying. And then go for another founding. Cast a free glimpse. So yeah, our hand shaped up very nicely. And that resolves, finding lots of goodies. Yeah, that's enough for a concession. Double Narcomoeba, triple Amalgam it seems. That's way too much stuff for the Spirits deck to handle. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is uh, pretty medium. Can mill with Gaze and Supplier. Gaze hopefully finding Glimpse on turn 2. And then we'll need a discard outlet for Amalgam and Wanderer. Creeping Chill's gonna be kinda stranded. Yeah, let's just mulligan and see if we can do better. This looks better. Narcomoeba can go. And then turn one, we could looting, discard Bloodgast, and hopefully find a second land before our opponent gets a chance to cast a, a Bowmasters. And now that we found the second land, I still like that play. So it gets maybe a black red here. Cast Looting, discard Bloodgast and Amalgam, and then next turn Founding for a free Glimpse. Opponent keeping a Bowmasters, I'm sure. So no discard spell is good. They can shoot the Bloodgast potentially. I guess I can try moving to the second main to see if they already want to shoot down blood gas and then we just fetch to get it back once again. There's a tiny chance I would mill four copies of uh, Creeping Chill and give blood gas haste, but yeah, managed to bait out the uh, Bowmasters here. And that's why fetch lands are nice. Just get it back right away. And then still go founding into Glimpse. Um, might actually get Steam Vents here, so we have double red in case we mill our uh, Ox. Although I guess with Bowmasters in play, I'm unlikely to want to escape it. Alright, so there's Creeping Chill. Double Narcomoeba, and then a Ghoul will come back alongside Amalgam. So all in all, not bad. Still only the one Amalgam, but it triggers off multiple things. Yeah, Bowmasters remains a pretty annoying card, since we have so many one toughness creatures it can block and take out. Well, this is a trade I'll make any day. And not bad after all. Okay, did not see that one coming. 
shoots another an Archimede bat. Mill four. And we did actually mill the Ox in the meantime here. And we milled the Wander now too, giving the team flying so we can fly over this army. And then the plan is probably just to cast all the one drops in my hand. I can do so before attacking on the off chance that we mill more creeping chills and give bloodgast haste. So I guess I probably don't want to cast a looting, I take that back. So instead we could just cast gaze and flash back a gaze. And so we'll start by flashing back. Those are all good to put in the graveyard. Get back Bloodgast. And the Founding can eventually get back another uh, mill spell, but of course next turn we're already gonna cast it, so don't think it's gonna be relevant enough. And attack. Okay, put us down to 9. Bloodgast now has haste. Four mana. Is this a one ring, perhaps, to stall out the game? Obliterator, that's fine. It's your opponent on a devotion deck with the Grey Merchants, most likely. Take four, and then our opponent should just be dead in the air before we even do anything else. Could also heart cast blood cast as a 2-1 flying haste. Not a bad deal. But this is more exciting. We'll see what else we mill. Creeping chill. And then why not go for a supply or two here. Okay. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and as far as hands without glimpse go, this one's not that bad. Can looting on one, discarding blood gas and wander, and then turn to founding, cast another looting perhaps. Yeah, that looks good. Make sure to cast looting before opponent can flash in a bowmasters to punish us. And then get black red looks good. Okay, Creeping Chill, not a card we love to draw. Much better to mill it. And if we're afraid of uh, Bowmasters, we can Founding cast a free gaze. Okay, Wish Claw, so opponent a combo deck. Fair enough. Yeah, let's uh, stick to the plan. Founding. And I think we still cast a gaze here. Next turn, mill for four. Since we didn't mill a glimpse yet. Okay, maybe keep a glimpse on top. Alright, those are good to mill. An Archmeba helps get Price Amalgam back. If her opponent does activate Talisman, we can find a glimpse, I suppose. For now, Guardian Idol. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is some sort of Bolas' Citadel Storm combo deck with Dark Ritual. Still want to mill myself. There's Glimpse, so next turn we can replay Glimpse through the Founding. So point still at 20. I'll just start by attacking. And then could cast Looting, Flashback, Gaze. And then next turn, hard cast creeping chills, actually not too bad. Although I guess we're going for the glimpse. Do this now in case we mill another creeping chill. We do. That's awesome. So now we actually get back the silver smote ghouls that we just discarded. Okay, so now we've got meaningful pressure on the board. Presenting lethal for next turn. 
So they need to make something happen. Activate Talisman, four mana left. But uh, opponent could still make more mana with Dark Ritual. Maybe cast the Tendrils to gain some life back. Alright, opponent goes digging. So we get control of the Talisman. And the One Ring, fair enough. So that's gonna prevent damage next turn. So, still worthwhile to glimpse myself, I think. Let's see. So they have protection. Damage is prevented by protection. So we can replay glimpse. And then... I don't think there's anything I want to do with the talisman, necessarily. Get an Arc Amoeba. And then Fetch Land will enable Bloodgast. Could actually decline to get back Bloodgast if we're afraid of a Sweeper, so we can use a Fetch Land to essentially get back everything in the opponent's turn. And then for now just pass. You can also flash back a gaze. Opponents protected by the ring, so they won't get damaged. And our opponent's gonna draw. See so if they can string together multiple one rings. They can potentially set up some powerful synergies. Opponent's drawing. And a Demonic Tutor, so likely getting another one ring, playing it. Suppose we could try to mill the opponent, but as long as they're protected by the ring, we can't target them with Glimpse. Creeping Chill also doesn't work, since damage is prevented by the protection. Even though we don't target them, but I'm pretty sure it still uh, prevents the damage. Alright, it's gonna be a Dark Ritual, so they've got other planes. And a Beseech. Sacking the one ring to get... is it just another one ring? Something that they didn't cast for free. And our opponent explodes. Alright, I guess they maybe ran out of outs or maybe miscalculated. But I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and I see Glimpse and I keep. And then we're gonna want to make sure to get a blue-black land here. So we have Island for Wanderer and can play turn 1 Supplier. And yeah, hopefully your opponent doesn't have a discard spell to take away Glimpse. Start by milling a Creeping Chill. Mishra's Bobble. Opponent's not playing Lurus as Companion, which is pretty telling since it's often paired with Bobble. So I'm not entirely sure what they're up to. Right, maybe a domain deck without Gigantha. So for now, founding, I guess, of Blood Crypt is fine. Chapter 1, Cast or Glimpse. And yeah, I saw some goodies. Another Creeping Chill, Ghoul and Tamalgam coming back. Opponent's already down to 12, now facing an army of zombies and vampires. Zombie vampires, even. And that's enough for a concession. Yeah, that's the power of Grix's self-mill. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand seems pretty poor. While we can discard Amalgam and Ghoul, there's no self-mill. Narcomiba doesn't do much. This is better. And then Narcomiba can go. Supplier on one, hopefully Glimpse on two. And Gigantha often points towards a domain strategy. So they could have Stubborn Denial on turn two, has interaction. 
Typically don't see discard spells. Supply are also good at blocking uh, larger creatures or potentially getting in the way of a Ragavan. So we'll see how this pans out. Overgrown Tomb could also see Deathrite Shaman, which can be relevant graveyard hate. But for now, Wild Nakadal, another glimpse is excellent. So play Supplier. Milling a Bloodgast and Ghoul. So now we're just looking for Creeping Chill. The Kavu can also exile cards from our graveyard, but I'm not too worried about it. So no blue mana means we don't need to worry about a potential Stubborn Denial. And there's the Kavu I was talking about. When it attacks, can exile up to one target card from a graveyard. Well, hopefully we just get everything back that matters. And uh, cast a glimpse here. Already have our island. Want to try and get double red for Ox. Alright, double creeping chills. Not bad. So any ghouls that are in the graveyard will return. And opponent already down to 8. So Bloodgast has haste. But I wouldn't be attacking. What they could do is try and take out Bloodgast. And then exile it with the Kavu. But now that they're at 8. They also have to be careful about an attack back. Opponent did get Overgrown Tomb early, could imply that they have Bowmasters in hand, which is pretty good at taking out Ghoul and blocking it. But with another Glimpse coming up, we can hopefully find more action. There's a Bowmasters. Shoots the Supplier. Get to mill three. Nothing relevant. Opponent going for Amalgam or Bloodgast here. Bloodgast maybe makes a little bit more sense with it having haste. Goes for Amalgam. So now I wouldn't mind drawing a land. Narcomiba, so could also Heartcast, Bloodgast. What happens if we do that? Attack all out, block, block, take four down to four. Nah, doesn't seem all that amazing. Have to imagine casting Glimpse is going to be better. Find Wanderer, so our team now flies and our opponent's just dead. Sweet. Well, that was a quick one. Punishing the fetch land, shock land mana base. Especially with those creeping chills. Alright, so we got to see our Grixis self mill deck in action. And yeah, the deck's pretty good. It is definitely a little bit weak to Bowmasters, which is a heavily played card. Probably the most played card across the format right now. So it definitely has some weaknesses. Graveyard Hate, luckily not too common outside of like Deathrite Shaman, which as the Graveyard Hate goes is pretty mild. So that one we don't mind too much. And uh, then it's mostly just about mulliganing into Glimpse. So if the opponent has a discard spell early to take it or a counter spell, then our game plan also starts falling apart a little bit. But for the most part, I've been having a good time playing this deck in Timeless. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day.